Uh, hello, my name is Huerta uh, Santer, uh, and today we'll be talking about the externalities of the participatory budget in Medellin communities enhancing uh, security. The literature about uh, participatory budget uh, is full of uh, reviews about the uh, role of uh, the civil society and the state. Uh, talk about how decentralization permit uh, uh, new uh, mayors uh, to introduce strategies that can enhance civil society to provide by better services. Uh, it focuses on this role of uh, state organizations as key players uh, in mobilizing and democratization of, uh, of the civil society, as Grindel points out. Uh, uh, Evans uh, brings uh, a point very important about this relationship between the state and civil society and talks about the synergies. He explores how complementary and embedded in the synergies uh, strategies for creating action by government uh, can foster social capital by linking mobilized citizens to public agencies can enhance the efficiency of the government. Uh, this goes a lot in line with uh, um, the study of Davis about social uh, capital and how the relationship between uh, communities and the state and how the distance between those two uh, has um, bad outcomes in terms of security. Uh, this specific uh, project starts with a research question uh, that goes beyond the regular literature that critiques uh, a participatory budget, or that evolves about participatory budget but critiques uh, participatory budget. Most of it is evaluations of how those projects are executed and what is the level of the, the uh, democratization that actually, and decentralization that actually happens there. What I'm really interested here is in looking at the case of a specific series and what effects has the introduction of the participatory institution has on individuals and local institutions in the middle of violent contestations between the state and non-state armed actors. I'm really interested in the case of Medellin, a city that is, uh, used to be known in 1991 as the most violent city in the world. And, it is, and most violent city in, in Colombia, a country that is, has had a, a history of violence of um, more than 60 years. That violence uh, represents in the territory of the city in a, in, in a myriad of ways. Here you're seeing uh, whole violence uh, in a period of 10 years uh, move uh, from neighborhood to neighborhood. You're seeing uh, homicide rates uh, in, in the level. Of. Within that, I'm focused for this specific research in two communities uh, uh, that represent three districts of the city, uh, Comuna 13 and Comuna 6 and 5 of the city of Medellin. Uh, that are both uh, with high levels of uh, violence and also high levels of informality, what represent this kind of distance of the state with the communities that is very important uh, to understand. Uh, more importantly, is a community that had high levels of uh, uh, communities with uh, civil society co uh, groups uh, that, that try to work and, and to fulfill role, uh, state roles within, within, the, within the neighborhoods in the midst of this, of this conflict. Is because of that, uh, that is in actually uh, where the first, this is Comuna 13, and this is Comuna 5 and 6. Is, is, is that uh, uh, integration of uh, conditions of security and, and the level of uh, organization at the, at the civil, uh, of civil society that uh, uh, allows to these two spaces to be one of the first where the uh, participatory budget is actually re and what we're seeing here is what is the level of, of conflict that happened, that evolving uh, element at the scale of the district. Single arm actor controlling one area, uh, it gets fragmented into multiplicity of it. What complicated myriad of mobilization and action within those spaces where the state uh, it doesn't arrive uh, quickly enough and where communities have to react uh, uh, in different ways to how to interact with that. In, in that, in 2003, in, in Medellin, there is a new uh, political power uh, that arrives to the mayor office, in, led by uh, Sergio Fajardo, a uh, mathematician that, is, uh, that leads an independent party and implements with it uh, a series of pro-poor uh, policies. He's uh, supported by a larger new number of uh, NGOs, and because of that, uh, he participates in the budget, becomes an essential way to support those groups uh, within uh, what I'm um, really interested here, beyond uh, uh, what the literature say about Medellin, is, is try to understand how that happened into that context. But for that, uh, 
just to make some points about uh, the role of the participatory budget uh, within the city of Medellin and the budget in the city of Medellin is, is focused on how complicated uh, the process actually is. Uh, and here, for example, you're seeing uh, the structure of the participatory budget of the city of Medellin. What is important here beyond to see uh, the number of actors that are involved in it, um, uh, this, uh, the municipality and the multiple orga uh, civil organizations within uh, those uh, scales of the district, uh, from the uh, Junta de Acción Comunal, uh, or organizations around gender, uh, LGTB, uh, women, uh, or, or uh, age, uh, or religious uh, uh, organizations. All of them competing and uh, for the, the budget and deciding, competing and deciding what kind of budget is uh, uh, allocated for the different projects that each one of them are proposing. What this, uh, and the critique that has been uh, evolved uh, about the participatory budget, specifically in the city of Medellin, uh, it talks about how uh, technocratic the process actually is, how it requires higher levels of knowledge and an organization, institutional organization, to be able to compete and to acquire and to be able to implement the projects uh, that each and, and the, to access the funds to implement the projects that each one of these uh, organizations has. What that as a res has as a result, uh, uh, with that, uh, that is forcing uh, groups uh, to mm, create alliances uh, to be able to enhance the institutional capacity to compete for the funds uh, wi within the framework of the participatory budget. And nobody better here than a, a community leader of one of those organizations that is talking about what the effects of the participatory budget are within his, uh, within his community. So the participatory budget has created important alliances between other neighborhood groups that would have never negotiated with each other and created a singular vision of community that goes beyond the lot. He continues saying, the PB has had a lot of influence in the way leaders of the neighborhood interact with each other. Leaders and groups who did not like each other now have to work together, and this has changed the mentality of the leaders from a closed circle to think in terms of communal. We know and acknowledge each other. So what is really important here is that idea of, of how it, 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 uh, it, it, it forced alliances bet between groups that didn't have before. And what is uh, one example is this group of, uh, of, of women uh, that uh, is an organization that tries to capture women that have uh, left, uh, th th that have some alliances groups. Uh, this here, for example, is a group that is dealing with the issues of uh, uh, invisible borders, that is the boundaries between different gangs. And it becomes a problem of, for the mobility of the entire community. And uh, the funds of the participatory budget are used to support kind of groups. Uh, this is an example that tries to uh, uh, explain uh, what is the role that uh, the Heroines de la Mor, uh, this organi small organization, uh, has in to capture, uh, sequester women that have entered in, into gangs and to uh, uh, bring them to a space where they actually uh, could leave the organizations, uh, the illegal organizations that are, are part. More important to that, that is uh, the issue of attacking, uh, of, uh, of having, generating these creative strategies, uh, things because they have these funds and this in increased institutional capacity, is, is the ability also that they're not only attacking uh, illegal armed actors, but also they could attack the state. That is, is, is also that they, it creates a very interesting relationship. Because the funds are decided by the community, uh, even if the state is given the funds, uh, the community had, created some kind of shelter uh, outside uh, of the rule of the state. They are not receiving the funds directly from the state, but they receive the funds from the community. The community is the one who decid decides how the funds are allocated. And that allows them to have enough leverage uh, to actually uh, compete against the state. And what is uh, this letter uh, explained uh, is, is a, a letter for, uh, you know, that it was published by the Mesa de Derechos Humanos y Convivencia de, de la Comuna 6. Uh, uh, that was denouncing uh, to the uh, then mayor of Medellin, Alonso Salazar, how his administration was paying bribes uh, to illegal armed actors. So this is uh, that I found really important is that ability that you could actually attack the state directly even when you are receiving funds from it. Uh, it's a very important outcome and externality as, as I mentioned at the beginning.
Uh, more important about that, uh, uh, this this shelter, this uh, the, the issue that this, the you're receiving funds from the states, but you're also uh, shelter from the state, uh, allows you to uh, to produce and and to experiment about different strategies that will not be possible just directly from the ideas that the state is is, is trying to implement. Here, what we're seeing is that um, in this example that I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to push here is how that example that I was explaining before about uh, Heroines de Labor uh, organization experimenting on how to capture uh, women and, and trying to take them away from uh, uh, being inside gangs, uh, actually the same strategy gets scaled up by the state uh, later thanks to this kind of connection that it happens with, between a state and, and, and the communities that are uh, enacting these kind of projects within, the, uh, within these new clusters of enhanced institutions. Example of show homes is actually uh, deactivated by the state, but enter into a uh, in, into a educational process that allow them to to generate a way to uh, pay for their uh, for their daily life uh, and, and not use gang. Uh, so, uh, as a conclusion, I, I, I see this as a resilient uh, kind of circle. Uh, they, that it, it, the participatory budget allows this kind of uh, a vacuum uh, of direct control. Uh, but also allows uh, to for these uh, spaces of enhanced institutional capacity of communities that allow them to experiment with ideas to implement in their own territory, allows the states to learn from them, and in turn uh, reinforcing and enhancing uh, the livelihood of the uh, the quality of life of these communities. So, see there is a, is a circle of resilience. Uh, where a, an existing resilient by the community gets uh, en enhanced by the economical and institutional support of the participatory budget. Uh, that then uh, al uh, that, that institutional support for this creation of a strong community organizations that accumulate resilience, that enhance the resilience of these communities, and that allows to create a, a spaces for, uh, for, for new, new elements of, uh, of safety and enhance that quality. So this, uh, uh, Ever growing a spiral is one of those consequences of this, uh, of, of the way I see the externalities of the participatory budget is happening in Medellin. There is not to forget here that, of course, this is happening, this is a, a force element happening out of those critiques that appear in the literature about how this is actually implemented. There's a still a larger levels of groups that cannot access to these funds, uh, specifically because they are not uh, able to cluster within uh, specific ideals to compete for funds. So it is a still uh, unrepresented uh, groups that not uh, are able to access these funds just because of the complexity of the system. So the same critiques that are appearing in the literature are still valid here, but are those externalities that are also important to see. Uh, thank you very much.